It's here. It's bloody here. It is bloody here. What's going on everyone, it's me the Hoovian Rant and welcome to the long awaited, the most anticipated of all, the Doctor Who DVD collection. So yes, here it is, the DVD collection. Now before I get into it, we need to make a few pointers. So I've been, sorry for the delay of this video, I've been a bit under the weather, uh, had a bit of a, <clears throat> a, bit, a bit sick, you know, sore throat and all, but I have lovely H2O up. Look after me there. So yes, that's one issue. I'm sorry for the delay. Uh, lots of followers and just ignore my coughing and stuff because uh, you know I am sick. The other thing is the expansion. Look at this. Actually down there, there are actually doc there's actually DVDs down there. We're on the third shelf. And I can't even fit the box sets on the shelf anymore. That just proves I need a uh, need a new. Uh, shelf. So yes, this has expanded greatly since February, I think. Yes, bloody long while. That was when um, I hit around 100 subscribers, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was. So, yes, absolutely brilliant. It's expanded. Um, there are a few uh, things to mention. Basically, there are missing episodes in here, which are reconstructions. So, most people would love to know how, you, how, I, how people do those. What I did is I put them off on the uh, off of the internet. I used Christopher Loftus covers because they are probably the best covers you'll ever see. So I, d I downloaded those, got them printed. So most people print them out like themselves with the photo paper and stuff. I actually got mine at uh, photo developers. Um, for us Aussies, I used uh, Office Works, so I got those printed off, got some blank DVD covers, and then put them in. So I only have two two stories. I uh, only have the actual DVDs in them, uh, proper ones, because my computer's so full, I can't even fit things. Like imagine Dark Master Plan, that's going to be a pain. So yes, one more thing is, you notice in the my other videos, there's no new series stuff. That's because. I am a very old school person. So when basically when I was when I first started watching Doctor Who, which was actually when it came back, we used to tape the, the actual episodes. We actually we actually taped them and it was just such a better way of doing it than rather waiting for ages and ages and ages. Obviously Netflix came and I sort of watched that now, but still to this day we've taped a bit of series 10, but there's been a few problems, so um I've decided I'll be getting the box set for series 10, uh, not the individual releases, because seriously, do we really need, um, it's just a waste of time, I think, so, yeah. So basically, there's no, there's, got, there's not going to be any new series DVDs in here, so, yes. Anyway, enough is enough, let's get into the DVD collection. So first, we start, of course, at the beginning. Now, I have actually almost completed the entire 60s era. I only have one DVD left, and when I get to the 10th planet, I will tell you. It is in the first Doctor's range, but yes, anyway, let's start with the beginning with The Unearthly Child. Uh, episode 1, absolutely brilliant. Everyone else thinks 2 to 4 is just terrible, uh, but for me, I love it. it is, that is very underrated. Earth Child as a whole is very underrated. I absolutely love parts two to four. Uh, one of the best, even though it is just about talking about fire. It, it keeps you very much entertained. Um, but yeah, so. The Daleks, uh, yeah. A lot of people absolutely love this story. Not a real fan of it, to be honest. Even There's one criticism that bypasses everyone. Even the people who love it most can understand this criticism. It's too long. Seven parts. For a seven parter, it just drags on. It's just it's just so long. Uh, but still I guess it's 
pretty essential because it is, of course, the Daleks' first story. So, what can you do? The Edge of Destruction, also another underrated one. Uh, I, even though this was literally just filler for Marco Polo, I really actually enjoy this story, mainly because it, it's a very character development story. You see how they react to each other when they're set in a small environment. Of course, the TARS has exploded, and they have to use their skills and stuff, their knowledge. And it just shows, it brings them together. It's a very nice relationship they have together. It's an absolutely cracking story, I think. Very underrated. The missing conspiracy story of all time, Marco Polo. Yes. Uh, by that title, yes, it is the most rumoured. I don't even know anymore. Is it in the archives? Is it not? Just make up our bloody minds, BBC. Just release it already, if you have it. Oh, I don't want to make my brain hurt out here. Anyway, I've said a bit of this story. Um, it's alright. This is the second, of course, pure historical. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it looks like a very interesting one. One, of, one, one very praised. But if it turns out it's one of those things where it's hyped because it's missing and then it's oh, utterly boring or tripe, um, might suffer from that. But still, uh, looking forward to watching this one. Keys of Marinus, yes, the one that I was missing when I thought I had the entire season one. But yes, uh, yeah, it's a mm, alright story. It's just the Vord, but they're not really that special. They sort of come in a few big finish audios, which is good. Although it's Beachhead, which is doing Coalition 2, so I'll rather forget that. The Aztecs, special edition, very nice, uh, pure story. The Sensorites. Oh, this story, yes. It's got what some people call the Curse of the Hartnells, which has happened to the most of them. Basically, episode one is great. It is medium or higher. Episodes four, episode the rest of the episodes are just tried, and the story just goes downhill from there. So, yes, uh, I mean, you just want to get done really when you do the marathon. But yeah, the Reign of Terror, new one, uh, brilliant. Uh, looking forward to watching this one, mainly because it's set in the French Revolution. Um, and coincidentally, I did a paper on that for school. Uh, a few uh, month last a few last term. Should have got picked this one up earlier to get some good tips. But still, it looks like a brilliant story. The animation for I can't remember which episode it is, but I think it's by Planet Fifty Five, who are, in my opinion, the best animators of Doc Missing Doc Two episodes, like the Tenth Planet episode four and the Moon Base. They're brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Planet of Giants, got this mainly for completion reasons really, it was kind of a pick between, um, I don't know what it was, I had a sort of, I forgot now, it was between some, this and something else, and I sort of weighed it down to, okay, so, which story is going to get me closer to completing the season, and of course Planet of the Giants was closer because I picked, also picked up the Romans, the rescue of the Romans, um, and the time meddler, so basically that meant I basically all have only have one DVD to collect from season two, and frankly the whole, whole of the track of the uh, Hartnell era, which of course is the web planet. But yes, still, um, yeah, this is also a very ex different type of episode. It's very unique because there's no real villain in this story. It's basically just a doctor. Susan and Barbara and then just travelling around and then they land into a, a sort of bother with the black beings being tiny and stuff so it's a very interesting sort of unique story. Also fun fact for you guys if you, it was also noted it's famous for this story because it was originally going to be a four-parter but they had to get they had to condense it down to three parts um I don't know why but they had to mix part four with part three together. Now, if we got the regular um, four-parter, this story would never existed. Very interesting indeed. Back up the Dalek invasion of Earth with the standard 40th anniversary Region 4 logo. The rescue. Vicky's first story. 
what the hell I'll get it anyway. Um, looks like an interesting episode. Um, I've heard the second half is a bit better, but still uh, looking forward to seeing Vicky's. At first, I thought it was a historic, pure historical, but it seems that hey, I think that's an alien, so not pure historical, but still. The Romans, yes, M was regarded as the better half. Um, yeah, looking forward to having a watch of that, of that story. The Crusades, um, very highly praised, and most the most wanted in the collection besides Master Plan. Um, but yes, I don't really get the hype for this story. To me, it's just another pure historical I think. I uh, don't know why it's so overhyped but yes I actually did a video on this signing petition by James Doctor Who reviews you can go check out that. Um, but yeah another story down I suppose so uh yeah. The Space Museum underrated. The Chase very sort of dark story. The Time Meddler so this one introduces the monk, of course, who doesn't really get on his, oh, on his feet after Master Plan, but he does in the Big Finish audience, especially the 8th Doctor Adventures, which I suggest all of you check those out, because they are bloody magnificent. Like, you, need to, you need to listen to that. Um, unless you're, well, yes, yes. Just uh, if, you're, if you're a light-hearted player, don't listen to the book, but that's dark as hell. Galaxy Full. It actually has a disc in here, but it's a condensed version from the uh, Aztec Special Edition, so yes. Um, this is sort of mixed, really. Some people say it's good, some people think it's bad. Don't really know why. Uh, probably just a standard episode anyway. So. The prequel to the Dark's Master Plan. Mission to the Unknown. I actually watched this one. I, uh, I, yes, I actually have this one also in a uh, DVD because it's only one episode. So yes, uh, this is the Ian Levine animation. Um, but I watched it. Really good. Really good setup to the epic. It's it's brilliant. There's like. I think it's one of the only episodes where everyone dies. Like, because there's no, because the Doctor isn't in it. All the companions, all the people die, all, except for the Daleks and the people they're teaming up with, but yes. Very nice. The Myth Makers, this is a very interesting one I've heard, because the first half of it is really comedic and light-hearted, funny, silly, you know. Then the second half happens, and she goes to dark room, like lots of dark things happen I've heard. So it's going to be very interesting. This is also Vicky's last story. Um, shame she didn't stick around for the Dice Master Plan, but then again, it's probably better that she did, because she'll be yet alive. Anyway, speaking about the uh, speaking about the next story, we have the Daleks Master Plan. Yes, this story, the 12 part epic, or 11 part epic if you do it on the count, uh, Feast of Steve, because you know, that's a tripe anyway. But still, are oh, absolutely cracking one I've heard. I've watched a few clips uh, of it, I've been bouncing around YouTube, and you know, mainly Josh Snares, who in my opinion does has done the best Dark Master Plan animation, you should check that out. Then you don't have to watch the silly loose cannon re reconstructions. But yes, yeah, still an absolutely brilliant story. Very dark. I mean, lots of people die. Like, spoiler alert. I'm putting a spoiler alert up here, so if you don't want to know the Dark Master Plan, because it's one of the best stories ever and you don't want it spoiled, look away now. You gone? Good. Okay, so basically, three out of the five people on the cover die, so Sarah, or Sarah, whatever, um, Marvick Chen, and Nicholas Courtney's character, which I forgot, but yes, so, good job. Anyway, a cracking story, definitely sort of put a ripple into this, and the longest serial in Doctor Who history, if you, if, uh, 
you don't get charged hard. But that that was that was a cross. Uh, that was that was a whole story, not a serial, I guess. So yeah. the massacre, I said Bonnie's Eve, or it's the massacre if you want to be a lazy uh, shortish. But yes, this story it's very interesting because. It has the same thing with Enemy of the World, where some most people forget it. And there's also the other thing with the enemy, the enemy of the world, where it's got the duplication of the Doctor, which, what I mean by that, is that there's someone else who looks exactly like the Doctor, because there's a priest in this story, or a preacher, I don't know, um, who looks exactly like the first Doctor. So it's very, quite interesting, and it, it, you can see why it borrowed things from Enemy of the World. So yes, the other also important thing is, episode 4, everyone wants that story so bad, I was like, why do you want that? And then I watched it. Steven's Departure. And my gosh, that was one of the best departures ever, if that was the proper departure. That is definitely, if that was his departure, that would have been up there with, with Joe's departure, which is really quite depressing. It's just so great. It just shows that the Doctor and, well, mainly Stephen, kind of just forgot about the past experiences. Vicky's left. The, the Daleks killed so many people he's around. Two companions that he's travelled around with. And he, the Doctor's just like, hmm, yes, never mind. I to get on with it. It's like in Time Flight when, um, it's like in Time Flight after Earthshock where where the uh, where, where the fifth doctor's like, oh well, he wouldn't, us, he wouldn't want us to mourn him unnecessarily. But it shows like the Stevens had enough. He's like, that's it, I'm out. Bye bye, Doctor. See ya. I'm not coming back because this is getting too much. And then there's that brilliant reflective of of the first doctor where he's looking back on his companions and he starts from the beginning. And it's not like that the crappy old get out of jail free card with series 10 where they just restock all footage. Where does Rory by the way? He actually mentions them. He's like, oh Susan, my dear, my dear, I hope you're alright. Susan, Chesterton, I hope you're alright too. And then goes goes down the line and up until uh, Stephen. Um, of course he runs back in and then with Doodoo which makes it even more of a train wreck. Speaking of Doodoo, we have a technically first story, the Ark, because she only really comes in at the end of the, of the massacre, but yes, the Ark. Uh, completion breezes really. Um, I've heard it's actually kind of good, but most of it's just other try. But, I mean, Doodoo is the most forgettable companion of all time. She's even more forgettable than Adam. Um, but, yes. Mm. <sighs> Alright, story. The Celestial Toy Maker. Now, this is an interesting one. I actually really want this one to be found. Mainly because it's very unique. It's very different to what Doctor Who's done before. Like, usually we have a regular, the Doctor goes in, saves a planet or something, um, fights the bad guys, wins and stuff. But in this story, it's very different. The Doctor isn't the one who has to save everyone. Dudu and Steven have to save the Doctor. And also another unique thing is, it's very quite psychological because it's played in a different realm. It's a series of games and puzzles that Doodoo and Steven have to solve in order to free the Doctor from the Celestial Toymaker. And it's a very interesting type of story. Very, very quite um, psychological, I would say. Um, but, yes, yeah, still very much looking forward to watching this episode. The Gunfighters, or what some people call the closest thing Doctor Who has to a musical. Yes. Um, yeah, looks... Yeah, alright, it, it, it's not great, but still. One thing I would like to point out is what I also pointed out on the Earth story with the Awakening, with the te oh, bugger. with the text, because it is also has a bit of, it's been chopped off, so if I compare it to the 10th planet, so 
you can see the T is very much different to that because it looks like it's been fatter. That's been skinnied, so it shows it's been cut off. So, uh, good job, whoever did that. Whoever did the sleeve text. Oh, who, who, who did that? Who? Let's have a look. Mm, let me get in there and focus. Neil, Neil Boyce. Make sure you check your things properly, because even fa even people who look a close eye at their DVDs can notice that. The Savages, Steven's last story, and it's quite ironic that the Savages aren't the main bad guys, but it's, um, I don't even know what the thing is, but it's like a council or something. But yes, this is Steven's last story, and it's quite dark. A lot of people die, so, you know, that's good. Um, but... Yes, Stephen was going, and it just proved it was coming to the end, well, it was approaching the end, with The War Machines, which is Doodoo's last story, where no one really gave a, a crap. But still, this story I really like, because this is technically uh, the template for the Pertwee era. This is what, this is the first proper Earth, Earth-based uh, story. This is... A brilliant story, I feel. I think, uh, great, absolutely great. I love how it's set in 1966. Proper Earth story. Um, it would have been brilliant if this was actually Unit's first story. Um, but still, a great. This is also the first story for my favourite two companions in the television series. Um, I would say, and that is Polly and Ben because they are absolutely brilliant. Um. But yes, they're, they're, they're brilliant. Now, I haven't seen this episode, but I've heard that there's a very funny cliffhanger, well, pretty epic cliffhanger. Uh, I can't remember which part it is, but it, the Doctor appears to be running to... Uh, the Well, no, the war machines are attacking London. Everyone's screaming. The Doctor's slowly walking towards them, and people are just running past him. So, and then the war machines turn to him, and it, it looks like he's like gonna be he's, he's gonna beat them up. He's gonna have a showdown. And it's just he's just like, come on, you little thieves, let's get on with it. Let's settle this once and for all, yo little dustbins. And then he just, and then, just, and then just goes attack. So hopefully that um that that that's gonna I'm gonna look forward to watching that. Someone needs to do a proper Colin Baker trial of time or cliffhanger to that. If that is actually the case, otherwise I've been lied to. Please don't be lied to. The Smugglers, um, very kind of interesting. This has got a bit of my curiosity in the past couple of uh, months, or days or weeks. Um, but yes, this is like the story where, of course, at the end, at the very end of the War Machines, uh, we saw Polly and Ben slip into the TARDIS without the Doctor noticing, and then it continues on from Smugglers, like, how dare you enter my enter my realm without my permission and it's like and they end up being taken to was it Scotland is it uh, country Cornwall so yes but this is a very interesting story because it is a um, it's like a treasure hunt story um pirates and stuff so we haven't seen that in a while this didn't really interest me before but then I saw the cover which of course is here and there's something very interesting about it. 
No, not Hartnell's face, even though he does look like an absolute boss. If I can get it. Not oh, bugger. Ben gets a bit of a beating in this story, it seems. Yes! He gets a bit beaten, and Polly's looking after him in, his, in her arms. It is canon, by the way. Big Finish is canon. Fight me, it is. It's explained in Big Finish. They did end up marrying each other, but then they sort of broke up. And then they sort of, a year later, they came back together. And, you know, it's all happy. It's uh, great. So, yes, it is true. It's canon. Shut up. I make the rules. No, I don't, because I'm a selfish bastard. Now we have my favourite Hartnell story of all time, The Tenth Planet. Of course, his last story. But still, it is a way to go out. Absolutely bloody brilliant. And why did I just put on a terrible British accent? Still, this is going to raise a lot of curiosity, going to get people lots to buy because, of course, the cliffhanger of The Doctor Falls, where good old, uh, good old money, which sounds a bit too, uh, sounds a bit racist, but, you know, that's, that's all these for you. Um, but the good old The First Doctor wandles into the site of The Twelfth Doctor, um, because he's landed on the South Pole in 1986. I think that's right. Uh, I'll have to watch this story again. Anyway, if my theory is true about Twice Upon a Time being the way it will play out, I'm very OCD things, so I'm, I'm very nitpicking, so I'm planning to do sort of like a, uh, sort of a very strange watching of the 10th planet. I'm gonna watch all the way up till episode four, uh, uh, and then pause it after he says, it's far from being all over. Uh, and then go watch the Twice Upon a Time, then come back and then watch the regeneration, basically. So, yes, if if that's how um, Twice Upon a Time works out, hopefully, if... Well, but it will be absolutely brilliant if it does. But still, a brilliant story. And this could technically form part of a trilogy with the... Um, with the 12th Doctor, because you've got you've got the Cybermen who are in World Enough Time and Doctor Falls, and then you've got the you've got Twice Upon a Time, where you've got the first Doctor about to regenerate, and you've got the South Pole, and you've got the Cybermen on there. So technically, why can't you just make a New Beginnings box set? Like seriously, I can't get it out now because there's with stuff but seriously that could be a new beginnings a new new beginnings box set where we've got the something return to the past and stuff so yeah. so now we start with the Trouson era and I have actually completed it yes that's a bit that's a bit of achievement even though it is quite sort of short it's probably the shortest out of the length except for McCoy oh no except for uh, Colin, because he only got two seasons, so yes, but still, we start off with Power of the Daleks. Um, yeah, not a real fan of this one. Yes, shoot me, but I feel Power of the Daleks is overrated. You can go see my review, which I did ages ago. I mentioned it in my last DVD collection um, on my 100 subscribers, but yes, I didn't really. I'm not a real fan of it. Uh, I won't go into that much, but I'll give it a six out of ten. Um, yes, shoot me. But what uh, what other thing is a bit strange is the animation, because um, even though people understand the issues with it, there's one thing I do like about it is the contrast between 2D and 3D animation. So with the 2D being the characters and the 3D being the dialogue, it's a very good contrast, I think. But in terms of animation, I'm not a fan of it. Like, I really much prefer the 10th Planet Episode 4 of Planet 55's uh, story, because, like, I couldn't even really recognise Ben that much, um, let alone Polly. Uh, but but I, I think Planet 55 does a much better job with, like, darkening the shades of it, where they, they just sort of just did a bit of a, a more realistic 
approach, but I much prefer the sort of comical of uh, the Tenth Planet. Um, also, there are a few produ uh, production errors, the continuity errors, but you know they were trying to get this out on the 50th anniversary of the actual episode, so it does explain that. One thing that really pisses me off is there's no reversible cover for us Aussies because that's how we, it works in Australia, so we're stuck with this ugly sort of logo when we got the same thing for the enemy of the world and it's completely fine. Oh, I am Weber Fit, but you know. But still, that really pisses me off because it looks so out of order in order. Damn you, Australia. Of the Highlanders, which is Jamie's first story. The Underworld's Menace. <sighs> yes, in my opinion, the worst uh, out of the Troutons. Uh, it, 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 all of it is awful, even worse than the Space Pirates. It's, it's that bad. Um, both DVD wise and story wise. Like, I mean, yes, kill me, I know. The classic series has the worst special effects, um, not great props, and this is the 60s. But what is this? What the heck are these? Are they supposed to, what, fish people? Can't you just put up some makeup or something? Rather than just put, what, set the foam all over their faces? Really? Come on, seriously? Look. Yes, I understand, this was the 60s era, there was no big budget props, no latex masks and all that, but seriously, they don't even look like they're fish, they look like, I mean that guy looks like he's a candy, oh he's a, why did I say candy, that sounds weird, that's basically what it is, it's candy, but it's a sweet, one of them. Still, not a great story at all. I mean, one thing that really buggers me is not only the telestabs, but the title sequence. They don't even bother to get a clean version of the one that's used basically from all of Hartnell's era and just do it. Instead, they basically technically wasted their time reconstructing a title sequence. Like, why? Just... That just proves how lazy they are. I mean, like, they were planning, like, Planet 55 was going to do the Underwater Menace, and then it got cancelled. And then they sort of just came out of the blue, and they just released this? I mean, is there even... I mean, there are some special features in there, but... Still... Not happy. I'll probably give it a 4 out of 10. It's bloody awful. The Moon Base a brilliant Cyberman story and a and probably the second best base under scenes story in my opinion. It is so good. The Cyberman walking on the moon. It's absolutely brilliant. I love this story. Uh, great sort of uh, update from the tenth planet. Uh, but it is still a, it is a great story. Everyone needs to watch this story. It is bloody the Macro Terror pretty good, uh, you know, not too, not too bad, uh, you know, it's a very cool type of story, but, yeah. The Faceless Ones, my second favourite story of all time, well, no, sorry, my second favourite missing story of all time, sorry, really good, absolutely brilliant, it is, it is so good, it's very underrated, it's probably one of the most underrated stories of all time, probably, would probably be my number one. Um, it's just so good. It's very, very brilliant. Of course, this is Polly and Ben's last story, so, you know, it's kind of a bit, you know, sad and all, but, yes, it just proves back in the day, in the 60s era, where the Tars would just go anywhere, where it felt like that the Doctor couldn't control it at all, so, hmm. The Evil of the Daleks, my favourite missing story of all time and the one I want more than Dalek's Master Plan, more than I want the Crusade, more than I want any of them. Because this story is bloody gold. This is a brilliant story and I would have been happy if this was the send-off from the Daleks. Because it originally was 
of course, Day of the Daleks came along, but still, it was a, it's a brilliant story. This introduces us to Victoria. Uh, a few people have a bit of criti criticism for this story, mainly with, I think it's parts three and four, where there's only, where basically that's all Jamie trying to find Victoria. Yeah, I can sort of see it, but still, all, it's still pretty. Uh, it kept me in, entertained. It's just a really nice, interesting concept. Probably the most creative one. This is sort of the big sort of what? Were, how would I say? This is sort of the big arc of the Daleks, the human factor that sort of played a bit of a role in Big Fish and other things like that. Um, but yes, it's a brilliant story. Absolutely. Bloody good. The Tomb of the Cybermen, my favourite Cybermen story of all time. Yes, Tenth Planet is my favourite Hartnell, but not my favourite Cybermen story. This one is, yes, I know, call me an overrated person in the comments. Yes, but I love this story. It is so good. Absolutely a brilliant Egyptian horror, I would say. Like, the Cybermen are creepy in this story, you know, their sort of new voice. It's like, we, you will become like us, even though it's kind of a bit robotic. It sounds so emotionless, which is so good about this story. The other main reason why I love this story this was because it was one of my first ever Second Doctor stories. It's just... The Abominable Snowman, very uh, sort of nice story. I mean, you've got the, the Cuddly Yeti, but then you've got on the cover the red eyes and the fangs, so you might not want to touch it, so, uh... Mm. The Ice Warriors! Sorry for making that cringy oppression, but still, um, regard, not the what some people, some people say this is not the best Ice Warrior story, some say it is. Most people say Seeds of Death Seeds, seeds the Seeds of Death is. Um, but, still gotta give it a watch. The Enemy of the World, brilliant story. The Web of Fear, probably the, well, for me, the best, based on the siege story, the best example, absolutely brilliant. Fury from the Deep, Victoria's last story, and it's pretty quite depressing, because it not only, f it's, it only, it f mainly affects Jamie. So, for Jamie, he thought that Polly and Ben were sort of his older brother and sister. Zoe's sort of his bickering, smart-ass friend. But, Jamie, but Victoria, he kind of fancied her. A bit sad, you know, that they never sort of end up. But, yes, it's like when Victoria waves goodbye to them as they come out of the ocean. Like, Jamie's like, will we never see her again, Doctor? I hope so, Jamie. I hope so. We'll miss him, won't we? Of course we will. And then they take up and into the ocean. Um, so yes, very sad, but still, this looks like a great story. Looks like a killer seaweed. It's got a 12 on this, uh, which is technically sort of M for us over here, so... A bit interesting, despite it being killer seaweed, so... The Wheel in Space. Zoe's first story and regarded as the weakest out of the 60s uh, Cybermen story. Certainly not the worst Cybermen story of all time. <coughs> Revenge of the Cybermen. <coughs> still my nemesis. But still, alright, might as well give it a watch. I mean, complete the 60s era, complete uh, the Cybermen era, so. The Dominators. Not a great story. Definitely, definitely. Bad, not 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 good, not good at all, not 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 not, not good. The Mind Robber, very interesting story, because the TARDIS explodes and I think they're trapped in fiction, I think. So, you know, that's a very interesting concept, but the invasion, which I'm not a real fan of. Yes, the I'm not a real fan of the invasion. Um I'm not a real mainly because I don't really like episode one that much. Um, it's just kind of a bit boring and not really interesting for me. Um, like, it just like, they, they're on a truck and stuff. And to be honest, I'm not a real fan of the animation. It's kind of hard for me to keep track of. 
Uh, but yes, it's uh, all right. This was like technically the first proper Earth story besides warm, the War Machines, but this is the proper one that sets up because you've got Bri Brigadier, you've got Unit, um, but yes, yeah, still, nonetheless, look, the Crotons, yeah, not a great story either. Oh my gosh, there are some good gems in Season 6, but there are some utter utter bottoms in that, in this in this season. I mean, it was sort of going down the season 23 route, well, the sort of break, and the season 27 route where things were going bad, like Doctor Who was actually considering being cancelled around this time. Um, and I think that was, I think, I think it was, they were, they were gonna give it one more season, and if it didn't do well, they would can, and, but, we'll get to that later. Anyway, the Crotons, not a great story in any way, shape or form. It's okay. The Seeds of Death. This is the standard edition with the 40th anniversary logo. However, I do have the Seeds of Death special edition. Now, why did I get this instead of waiting to get Revisitations 2? Well, mainly because um, this one has the exclusive to Australia's, the region for uh, 40th anniversary logo, and also has the interesting blue face. Now, it's interesting because I wanted, I've wanted to collect these. I managed to, I've collected all of them. Those being the Dalek Invasion of Earth, Three Doctors, Towns of Wen Chiang, and Earthshock. Um, but this is the hardest to get. I managed to get this on eBay. So yes, I love this one. This is my sort of prize because this is a bit of rare, so I keep it on the shelf along with the special edition. So yes, but overall, the Seeds of Death as a whole, it is regarded as the best Ice Warrior story. So better give that one a watch. So now we are almost at the end of the 60s era, and now we are down to the second shelf, and we are basically almost an hour over a three and we're only on we've only just finished the first shelf basically i've been recording for almost an hour so i don't know how long this thing is but we've got quite a lot to get through because we haven't even got to the 70s and we haven't even finished the 60s for goodness sake but still let's get on with it so first with the nice first shelf we have the space pirates excuse me for a second Oh, that was so worth it. In all seriousness, it's a bloody mess. Yes, I know I didn't throw Underwater Menace around, but it is not the worst story Underwater Menace is. Um, yes, fight me. But yes, this story is terrible. Basically, this was just filler. A bit of the, this, there was no budget basically spent into this. Um, a bit of the budget was spent into Seeds of Death. The main part of the budget went to the, the, the 10 part epic which was the war games the 10 part epic yes the one that introduces us to the time lords and town's last story i haven't watched it i've watched episode one that's as far as i've got so far um yes so i need to watch the whole story um and then again, I have to watch Dark's Master Plan the whole way through as well, so... Yes, but still, I'm quite looking forward to watching this one, actually. Uh, even though they've, they've watched episode one, but yes. And closing off the 60s, we have Lost in Time. Now, why did I put it here? Because I'm different. Well, some people put theirs up uh, next to Unearthly Child. Some put it up to in the special things, but I like to put mine right here because... It sort of symbolises the end of the 60s era, where we will never ever, ever get any other missing stories, except for Sharda, but that's that, that's an exception. That's, that's an exception. It also has a brilliant contrast between the 60s era and the 70s era with black and white and colour Doctor Who. It's just brilliant. I, I like to have it here because it just reminds me this is the end of the era. Like, it's brilliant. But yes, like most people say, this is essential for your DVD collection. This is where you get all your good missing stuff. 
so you get basically all all these even though some of them are outdated like underwater menace moon base uh enemy of the world web of fear even though those are outdated they're still all the all of the episodes from Dalek's Master Plan, which is, there's three episodes from the Dalek's Master Plan, um, and then there's audio for all the others. So yes, still very essential. So now we move on to the 70s era, starting with Spearhead from Space Special Edition. So as I said a bit earlier with uh, the Crotons saying that it was facing cancellation. Um, they were thinking, alright, let's give this one more chance, and if Season 7 fails, then we're pulling the plug. Little did they know that Season 7 would be the best season of all time, which is regarded by many people. So, starting off with Spear from Space. One word for the story. Classic. It is probably the, the, one of the most classics, I would say. It is so good. It is a really, really brilliant Earth-based story. Very, very light-hearted, I would say. Um, even though there's quite a lot of people dying. But still, it's a very great story. Very brilliant story for Pertwee's first story. It's, 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 it's brilliant. The Ambassadors of Death. Um, mainly famous for their cliffhangers and the sort of uh, sting, which some people call in the title sequences. But yes, this is regarded as the weakest of uh, Season 7, um, but still most people give it an 8. Uh, still, it's good, although it has a bit of um, repetition to it, because um, I've, seen, I've seen this story before, and it's quite good, but you've got basically Liz getting captured in Part 5, and then she escapes, then she gets captured again, which is the cliffhanger for Part 6. Um, yes, I think so, but yeah, it's, it gets a bit re repetitive, but still, nonetheless, it's pretty good. Inferno Special Edition, this is quite an interesting one, because I've seen this one, but very, very long ago, uh, I barely remember it, I remember bits of it, uh, but I don't remember much, so, it's going to be interesting, because this is set in a parallel world, so, yes. Terror of the Autons, Joe's first story, and the first story to feature the Master. Claws of Axos, special edition. The demons, all the demons, make up your minds. I don't, I have to be honest, I'd go by title, it sounds cooler. Um, but yes, this is the season finale for season 8. Um, very looking forward to watching this one. Um, so, nothing to it really. Day of the Daleks, um... Kind of a silly Dalek story. Yes, it's a bit silly, but yeah. The Curse of Peladon. Very political. Um, of course, this was the time with Brexit. I don't know politics. I'm terrible at it. I don't understand. I mean, no one does really, but still. Um, looks like an interesting story. This is sort of a debate. This also sort of ties in with Series 10, really, because we have the one and only... Alpha Centauri. Oh, I can't, I can't do a voice. Welcome to the universe. Um, but yes, so I mean it's very political. So yes, the Three Doctors. Very looking forward. This is regarded as the best anniversary story. So cool to it, really. Carnival of Monsters Special Edition. Yeah, I suppose. Look, Looks pretty pretty good. Um, first sort of story sort of set on my planet in the Perto year. Well, uh, I guess Day of the Daleks sort of counts, but still. Frontier in Space. Uh, Roger Elgato's last story. Sadly. Planet of the Daleks. The Green Death Special Edition. Pull my third favorite Doctor Who story of all time. It is a masterpiece. It is so good. Joe is at a top. The Doctor's at top. Brigadier is at his top. It is so good. This this is where the end really comes. So with the end, basically of the unit family, for the Doctor, and even and most importantly for Joe, because this is her last story. 
It is such a great story, absolutely brilliant. Keeps you on the edge of your seat. It is so good. 10 out of 10, I'll give that, I'll give it a 9. Uh, because, you know, it's probably my third favorite story of all time, but still, absolutely brilliant. The Time Warrior, Sarah Jane's first story, and regarded to be the best um, sort of Taran, which is Lynx. Death to the Daleks. All right. The Monster of Peladon. So this one sort of brings back the evil of the Ice Warriors, because they weren't really that evil. But yes, Planet of the Spiders. John Pertwee's last story. Um, surprisingly, I like this story. A few people actually don't like this story. I don't know why. What is wrong with you? This is a brilliant story. Even though they have to sort of make, they sort of have to change a bit after the death of Roger Delgado, because they were, even though, even though, um, it would have, I would love to see the get the final game. Um, it would have. This was a still a brilliant replacement, especially since they had to. Um, change it so quickly so yes the spiders are brilliant the eight legs are absolutely brilliant it is such a great story very memorable this was a brilliant send off for John Pertwee now we begin Tom's for Tom's era with robots yeah sorry about the terrible Tom Becky impression but yes it's a a very uh, ordinary story set in the brilliant side of English village uh, so Yes, very simple story. Great introduction to Tom. The Ark in Space Special Edition. It's just sort of a bit of importance to some things that follow into the Big Finish audios. Um, and then, of course, later on with Revenge of the Simon with the Nerva Beacon, or the Space Station Nerva, which was the first, which appeared in the first Big Finish story of the Four Soldier Adventures, which was Destination Nerva. So it's very interesting. The other interesting thing is the Wirren, who um, I actually this I I didn't realise they were actually part of the classic who when I listened I listened to them in Wirren Dawn, which is an eighth of the audio. Um, but yes, they they they're they're the main villains of this story and very quite interesting. The Sotaran experiment, nice two parter, you know, nothing to it really. Revenge of the Cybermen, yes, I regret saying this was probably my favourite Tom Becker story of all time. It is nowhere near that now. My gosh. Why did I pick this? But still, it's okay. A lot of people really hate this. People say this, put this on their worst. But it's alright, you know. Terror of the Zygons. Really, actually, quite like this story. This is sort of the last sort of unit sort of story. This is when the unit family really did break apart. This was, I think, the last story we saw the brigadier <coughs> in um, up until, uh, of course, uh, Mordrin undid it. Oh, Mordrin undead, I think. So, yes, um, still a brilliant story. This is Harry's last story. So. Yeah. Planet of Evil mainly got for completionist reasons. Pyramids of Mars. For me, I'm sorry, but it's overrated. Yes, kill me, overrated. I don't. I, I like Sutek, I really do, but I don't feel like he's that special. Yes, he's not. He's not like overly praised. Same with the story. I mean, the mummies don't really do anything apart from chasing people around in parts two and three, so... I mean, really, yeah. Um, also, you can sort of see a bit with Tom Baker not getting on with the director, so that sort of affects it, really. So, I'll still give it a high. I'll probably give it a seven or an eight, um, but not a nine or nowhere near a ten, because it is... It's still... It's not perfect. Seeds of Doom very great finale and very quite dark well when I say dark I mean more violent because the doctor he gets a bit violent in this story um, he's basically snapping people's necks um, to, to kill chase you know lots of uh, dark things I mean look at him look at his face he's not happy that just proves it's not he's a uh, 
regular purr face that he makes when he uh, starts to build canine part K92 at the end of Invasion of Time. Um, but I'm surprised he's got a G rating for us Aussies, so um, apparently uh, slapping people's necks is f fine for viewer, for younger, for any child, so basically. And the Doctor. The Hand of Fear. Not a great story at all. The Deadly Assassin. Absolutely brilliant, I've heard, so this is the first Gallifreyan story. Um, it's brilliant, I've heard. So, you know, the master's back with his goldfish eyes. And this is the only, I think it's, I forgot his name. I th was it, um, I forgot, I think it's Peter Purves, or that, I might be just getting confused. It's Peter Purves, um, who of course played Stephen, but yes, I think that's his name. Um, I mean, he only played the mask on once and he was wearing goldfish on his but still, it's a, st a cracking good story, I've heard. The Face of Evil, alright, not great, but, you know, play his first story. The Talons of Wang Chang, regular edition with the 40th anniversary logo. The Talons of Wang Chang, special edition. Quite racist, uh, this story is. Um, but, you know, this is basically sort of the end of the Philip Hitchcliff era, which is a shame because it is regarded as the golden era of Doctor Who, but still, Horror of Fang Rock, a lot of people really love this story, this is Maddie's favourite story um, of the fourth Doctor, so I've yet to watch this one, but this is the Rutans, which are the sworn enemies of the Sontarans. So yeah, it's very interesting, even though there are no Sontarans in this story, so it'll be very interesting to sit and have a look at this one. The Invasion of Time, um, pretty good, pretty good Gallifrey set story, you've got the Sontarans, and of course this is Leela's last story, um, and of course, Ken I Mark 1, but then, you know, what what, Tom, what face Tom makes when uh, he realises he has Ken I Mark 2. Will he be lonely, K-9? Insufficient data, mistress. Destiny of the Daleks. The worst Dalek story. Yes. For one story that, that's not the worst, and it's not a Colin Baker story. It's this is bloody terrible. It is so bad. It is so boring. It's just laughable. No no no, it's not even laughable. It's painful. It's not like time and the Rani so good so bad it's good. It's this is just this is just a train wreck here. This is just, this is just dull. City of Death. This is actually a new one, and it's a rare one as well, because it is region four. I managed to find this on eBay. Uh, you can check out the unboxing. But yes, I'm lucky I managed to find pick this one up. Um, also, well, I don't have them up there up on my shelf, but of all those books and stuff, I've decided to keep this one in because it's got the old sort of uh, Doctor Who thingy, so I like to keep it in there because it just shows how old this one is, um, even though it's not really that old. But you can't find this in the shops anymore, so and it's really quite hard. Like, Matt, uh, like of course, um, Maddie didn't even know this existed, so you know that's nice. The Leisure Hive. You can see the review that me and Maddie did on that. Um, we basically went on off topic, but seriously, it's a lot too high of what you expect. Megloss, the Keeper of Truck, and this has a loose disc. And finishing off Tom's era with Legopolis, the one that he didn't deserve to go out on. Tom should have deserved so much more, but seriously, it was season 18. 
If you've done your research, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, um, basically, he had enough of the role. He was giving up. He wasn't even trying. He was tired. He was just giving up on the show. He was turning the um, show on. He was turning his back on the show. And he was just giving up. He was just like, I don't care anymore. I don't want this role. I'm sick of this role. I'm done. Now we begin uh, technically the new era with Castrovalva. For To Doomsday, this is actually Davidson's first story he did. Um, he filmed Castrovalva second, but filmed For To Doomsday first. So you can sort of see the problem with it. Um, but still, I've heard it's alright. Not great, but yeah. Kinder, um, this is regarded as one of the best actually, so, you know, it's got the introduction to the Mara, which we'll sort of play later in the, uh, in the era, and then bigger into the, uh, big finish war years, but still, yeah. The Visitation Special Edition, um, this was quite interesting because what I've heard is it does the sort of Doctor Who answering thing, so it's like, what, who, who started the London fires? Oh, how about the Doctor? So, you know, it's very interesting. Uh, so, yeah, might as well have a look at it. Black Orchid. Um, I'm not sure if this is a pure historical or not. I think it is, it looks like, because it's only just like a sort of a regular murder mystery. Um, but, yeah, so, looks quite interesting. Now we have it, Earthshock. Adric's final story, absolutely brilliant. It is the fact that they they cancelled. I think it was the Radio Times uh, magazine because they were going to announce the Cybermen were back. It, like it just proves how dedicated they were back then. Why can't we have that now, Stephen Moffat? Why do you have to put John Sim and the Cybermen in a trailer and reveal it all rather than just? trying to cancel all the press. I mean, it doesn't work these days because we have internet, it's all over the place. But still, this was a massive reveal back in the 80s and as this is regarded as one of the best cliffhangers in all of Doctor history. I mean, now it's not really, but back then, this would have basically been as better, been as, been as hyped up as if we, if, if we never, if, well, if we were never announced that the, that the Mondasi Simon and the Ma and Johnson's master were coming back. A lot of people fan, fanboyed the hell out of this when uh, that cliffhanger dropped on us. Because it came out bloody nowhere. Oh, and also, Adric's death really hits you hard. You just see that he's going to die, and then... It just makes you, it makes the perfect thing with taking the, one of the biggest risks with the closing titles where there's no music, there's no fancy lights, it's just in the background, silence, you've got Adric's crushed up star, and then you've got the credits slow, silently rolling and it just makes you, what makes you reflect on what's just happened. It just shows how dark this, this Doctor Who could get. Time, then we have time flight. What the heck is this cover? Like, what really pisses me off is. It's just Nissa's. Nissa. I mean, her face has been. Yeah, it's. It's totally at the wrong angle. Her face is at the wrong angle, angle from her head. She's literally pointing. Her head's pointing that way, and she's just stuck her, like, flat on. Tegan is, you know, a rough copy, so is the Doctor, but this is all just bloody terrible. So, whoever, who did this? Dead but I'm sorry, but this sucks. Um, I, I'm sorry, if this is, if you tried your best on this one, I'm sorry, but it's terrible. Um, the story's terrible anyway, so, still, bloody so now we are on to the third shelf and beginning with Mark of Infinity, the second sort of part. Um, I, I also uh, ripped the uh, the DVD here, even if you can see the DVD unboxing. Just going to now prepare yourselves for.
Oh, there's more. There's more. Or are these? I don't know. Oh. Oops. I may have just cut the uh, the actual. Uh... Good job, me. These scissors. I have just cut the Arc of Infinity DVD. Good job, Julius. Good job. Yeah. Good job, me. So, I haven't actually watched this story yet, but one thing that really is quite annoying, I don't know if this is explained in the actual episode, but, but... What the heck is that? If that... That's not Omega. How the heck is that Omega? How do you get from... Where is it? How do you get from... From that... To that? How? I mean... I might not... I mind. I mean... This might much be all explained in it, which I, in case I'm sorry, and now I've basically just made a fool of myself, but if it's not... What the heck is this design? I mean, does... Just why? What is up with Omega? Why does he look so different? I mean, it looks like a... What? I don't even know what he looks like. I don't even know. Snake dance! Eh. Alright, story. The Five Doctors, 25th Anniversary Edition. Really good, I say. A few people... I don't like this story mainly because there's a lack of plot but seriously for me well most people it makes up the, the the inclusion of all the doctors and their companions makes it up um, yes I know the main objective is to get to the uh, get to the tower of Rassilon in the death zone um, that sounds like a very bad plot, but you've got all these brilliant things that you've seen. Cyberman, Daleks, the Master, uh, then all the Doctor's companions, Brigadier, Sarah, um, so many. Loads. Loads. The Awakening has the dodgy text from the gunfighters as well. Resurrection of the Daleks, special edition. I'm really, really looking forward to watching this story. What mainly really interests me in this story is because this story is really dark. I mean, this this story has a higher death count than the, than the Terminator. I mean, how? That's just insane. How did they get away with this? With only a PG rating, even though it doesn't say on this, because I don't know why they don't release the ratings here anymore, but still, I'm very much looking forward to watching this one. Also, this is Tegan's sort of last story. Um, also, introduces Linton, who sort of comes in a bit later, but we'll get to that in a minute. But yeah, still a great story, very good. I mean, there is some really dark stuff in here, like the Doctor is like, he, he, he fly out wants to kill Davros, because he's just like, as soon as he enters, he's just like, I know here's your prisoner, Davros. At your execution. And holds up the gun and is just about to point at, at Davros. Boy! That's some dark stuff. Now we have the Caves of Androzani Special Edition. Bloody brilliant this story is. Yes, yes. A lot of... It, it is regarded as the best uh, story of all time. It, it, I have to agree, it is so good. Um, it is brilliant, but definitely not my top favourite. It is good though. Probably for me, part four is my favourite. Um, even though there's not really much stuff, it keeps you entertained because the, the. I'll give you a rundown. Spoilers, by the way. Uh, the ship lands in sense of crashing. Um, the doctor gets out, then he runs around being chased by the guys, gets shot, gets half blown up basically, uh, gets shot around. Uh, Perry's getting poisoned, the Doctor's currently getting poisoned as well. Um, he goes to go try and find Pe Perry in the caves who uh, shows Jack is, hold is um, sort of taken care of. Uh, and then they take them, uh, they takes her to the TARDIS. 
and then of course he regenerates. Also with Shara's Jack, he's a very, I don't really know what to make of him because at the end of part four he's very caring. He's he's like, he's very nice to the doctor, he lets him go. And it's like, he, it's like he's very, he cares for Perry. I mean, even though he acts like a real perv when she's like conscious, but still. Um, but this story is quite dark because, you know, everyone loses basically, even the doctor. Um, Andrazani basically gets blown up, but still, really great ending to a brilliant doctor. Attack of the Cybermen. <sighs> yeah, all right, it's, it's okay. Definitely not the worst Cybermen story. Um, but still, uh, we've got the little M logo for violence, and that's because of that one scene. You know the one I'm talking about. Linton getting his hands crushed. You know, that bloody scene that um, got um, sparked a bit of a uh, controversialness uh, back in the 80s, uh, claiming that Doctor Who wasn't a kid show anymore. Well, you should look at it now. It's not a sight. They, 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 if people say Doctor Who is a kid show, show them season 22, season 26, Waters of Mars, and most of the big finish. Oh, and new adventures, if you really want to make them throw up. Also, no one can take seriously this Cyberman, the Cyber Trollers, uh, Cyber Lead, I don't know, bulge. I mean, I will, I would, uh, try a different word, but, you know, this is a family friendly channel, because you can't say it on this channel. Avengers of Varos Special Edition. This is what, obviously, uh, Bad Wolf took inspiration from, with the Doctor and Perry. Uh, being inside reality sh reality TV, which of course was in Bad Wolf with Big Brother. That was on. But yes, yeah, so this story is very interesting. This has Seal, who sort of later returns in Child of the Tile with Mind Warp. So, very interesting. Love to see the basis that they based it on. Revelation of the Daleks, this is what sort of begins the uh, Renegade verse. Imperial Daleks, the ones that are loyal to Davros, the ones that just want to get rid of him. Uh, this is a really creative art. I really like this conflict between the Daleks that goes on for quite a while. Uh, uh cross remembrance to Terra Firma and sort of really ends with Time War, really. So, yes, uh, still really quite a story. Uh, great uh, ending for season 22. Uh, but, yeah. One thing that everyone really hates about this story is the DJ. So when ever when they die, when he, he was killed by the Dalek, everyone was just like, "Thank the Lord." I mean, like it would have been so. It, it's it was like as if they were making it live, and they were like, "This DJ, the, the audience is like, this DJ is terrible. Why do we have to do this? All right, kill him, kill him, kill him with the Dalek." That should get the ratings up, and then they kill them, and then everyone's happy. Imagine if that happened, but never mind. But still, a great story. Now we begin Trial of the Time Lord with the Mysterious Planet. Yeah, alright story. Mind Warp. Got as the best out of uh, Trial of the Time Lord. Very kind of confusing with Perry. Uh, I mean, seriously, can we please get a definitive ending for Perry? Terror of the Vervoids, in my opinion, and most of people's opinion, the worst out of uh, this Trial of the Time Lord. I mean, what are the Vervoids? Really, what are they? Seriously. And the Ultimate Foe, which is set in the Matrix, which was sort of based on the uh, Deadly Assassin. So, that's interesting. Uh, probably a really good finale, uh, I'd say. Uh, very quite great. Now we enter the McCoy era with Time and the Rani. Oh, that was a terrible McCoy impression, I apologise. But yes, this story, it's a guilty pleasure of mine. Um, it is regarded as it's so bad, it's good. But yes, it's very lighthearted, very cheerful. Um, I'm incredibly bad, but it's so bad, it's good. So. You know, that's something to make up for it, so... Yeah. Dragonfire... Oh. Yeah, well, alright story. I mean, you've got that... Um, kind of a graphic sort of death for Ken. 
um, which is basically sort of the same thing with Indiana Jones. I mean, they basically managed to pull off the same thing as Indiana Jones. And what? Wasn't Indiana Jones and the La and Raiders of the Lost Ark made in the 80s as well? And it, I mean, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch it because there's. I mean, Ken's face melts. Um, and it's basically the same sh same face melt as in Raiders of the Lost Ark. And it's brilliant. Like, they, like the fact that, that a TV show could pull the same thing off that was in a movie in the same day and look exactly the same. Really, really. Shame that the story kind of tried though, but hmm. now we have my favourite story of all time: Remembrance of the Daleks Special Edition. My f absolutely brilliant. It is the, it is the classic, the classic. It is so good. The Daleks are at its best. It is a brilliant story. This is this was the 25th anniversary story and should have been broadcast rather than bloody silver nemesis. But I mean when I mean broadcast, I mean broadcast on um, 23rd of November uh, 1983. But yes, this is so good. Everyone loves this story basically. And it is my top number one because this is one of the first ones I saw and I love it to bits. It is Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Um, really, really great. The Happiness Patrol, very quite dark, uh, I, I would say. Um, I refer to this in my smile review, gosh, that was ages ago, where, where, where it's the same sort of idea, where if you, if you have grief, you die. And in this story, if you're happy, if you're, I mean, no, if you're sad, you die. So, Yes, it is quite a dark story, but then the Candyman sort of hum uh, gives a bit of lightheartedness to it. But that was more to come. So yes, this is regarded as the worst Siren story, and it definitely deserves it. I mean, this is a right old mess. This is. It's bloody awful. The Cybermen are. This is this is a. This is a bloody mess of a story. It is so bad. It is. I'm trying not to curse here, but oof. I need to keep my friendly, family-friendly channel in the in the works. Overall, not a great story at all. Bloody awful. Now we have the greatest show in the galaxy, the finale of season 25. Now, if I zoom out a bit, there's a Thunderbird there. Thunderbird one. Yes, I'm, I love Thunderbirds, fuck me. Anyway, Great Show of the Galaxy, really good. This sort of explained the tone that it was going down for season 26, a dark and very psychological route. This is a very psychological story. This this story is, you don't really know what the motives are. Um, you don't, it's very creepy, very psychological. It's not as straightforward as there's something as um, someone's evading or someone's trying to kill someone. It's very quite psychological. Um, this is sort of some people sort of see this is where um, Ace. This begins the Ace manipulation. Uh, but yes, still uh, Ghost Light is mainly where it starts. But still, really great. Battlefield. Yeah. All right, story. Ghost light. Um. Yeah, what is this? This is kind of a bit of a mess, really. Uh, very confusing, but I doubt. Um, which one's com confusing to you guys? Poll time, Doctor Who fans. Which one's confusing you? Ghost light or Zagreus? Comment down below if you actually have listened to Zagreus. Don't go. Don't take my advice. Don't take my advice and go straight and watch it if you have listened to it. If you haven't watched, if you've only watched uh, the new, new series, because your head will explode and burn in a fiery hell. So do not do that unless you are an experienced Big Finish listener. I should really put that on before um, you listen to, before um, 
the coming soon to big finish production stuff. Still, this is also a rare one, as you can see, because we have the little PG logo, so it proves it's region 4. So yes, I just got this one lucky on eBay. eBay's the way to go. Then we have, to end the classic era, survival. Absolutely brilliant. It's a real shame that this was, this was it. It just showed that Doctor Who wasn't for kids anymore. It is, uh, it is a proper show for all ages. Well, maybe not the children anymore. I mean, series, see, season one was all about teaching kids about histor historical, but now it came down a really dark path. I went even darker with the new adventures and the um, big finish audience, but still really great story. Now we have the TV movie special edition. My only favourite, my doc, my only favourite Doctor's uh, story. Yes, and I don't mind it. It's okay, but yes, I'd probably give it a six out of ten. Mainly, all that is is for me, Gad, because Paul is the legend. He is brilliant. Then we have Scream of the Shulker, which is a bit odd, but yes, very nice webcast. Um, really do like the comparison between this and the invasion animation because it's very quite similar and considering it from the time 2003 comparing it to animations like Sharda from the 8th Doctor Big Finish and Death Comes to Time and Real Time this is really impressive like you've got proper movements and stuff I mean you don't get that in uh in the Shadow and Death Comes to Time in real time, but yes. And here we have the movie special edition because uh, I have a, 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 this is my one that I lost the second disc to and I got the first one in Reposition 1. So now I'll quickly show you the box set. So we've got the beginning, which contains the Unearthed Child, the Daleks, and the introduction, Rescuing the Romans, Space Museum, the Chase, the Earth Story, which contains the Gunfighters and the Awakening, Manic Mania, which contains Fear of Space, Terror of the Autons, and then we've got Peladon Tales, which is because Peladon, Dalek War, which contains Frontier in Space and Planet of the Daleks, Rand of the Cybermen, Silver Nemesis, New Beginnings, which contains, which contains The Keeper of Trike and Logopolis, Crash of Elba, Mara Tales, which contains Kindred Snake Dance, Tide Flight, Ark Infinity, Trial of the Tiber, Ace of Ventures, which contains Dragonfire and the Happiness Patrol, and then we've got the Slipcase for the Romans of the Daleks, and then we've got Reputations 1. Every visitation is too. So that, bring, that brings the really long end to the very long DVD collection. I only have two minutes on my uh, memory card. I filled up two bloody memory cards. How is this possible? But anyway, so thank you for watching. Be sure to leave a like and a comment. This, I'm sorry for the really long video. I have to really wrap this up because it is about to go empty. It's about to be full. So yes. So thank you for watching, make sure to leave a like and a comment, make sure to subscribe, make sure to check out my Twitter, um, and all that other stuff, so yes, um, and comment below what your DVD collection is like, so you know, do your stuff, check out my Twitter and all that stuff, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time, this is me, The Who and Red, signing out, goodbye. What's good everyone, it's me the Hoovy Rent and welcome to the long awaited You can't see my fat oh. So yes let's get into view here. Anyway, enough is enough, let's get into the unboxing. The missing conspiracy Yeah, let's take special edition, very good prehistorical. The sensorites Yes, this one has the curse of the Hartnells, which some people like to call it. Basically, episode one is brilliant. The rest is just tripe. So, uh, a few people really like it, this story. Um, but, yes, it's it's brilliant. Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. The Myth Makers, Vicky's last story. This one's very interesting because it has what it has some very interesting things. 
The first half of it is very comedic and light-hearted. The second half it just goes down a really dark route. Like, lots of dark things happen, I've heard. So, yes, uh, that's, that's leaving me a bit of a watch. And I think Vicky's want departure is a bit sudden, really. Um, she decides to leave. I mean, like, I wish she hadn't left because she was only one away from the Daleks master plan, but... I don't, speaking of which, she put the best that she left there alive with her, with that, with <laughs> the Macro Terror. No, oh, very uh, ordinary story. Uh, of course, introduced the Macro, which we never thought would return, but then can Gridlock. Uh, not that saying that Gridlock is bad, but still, this story is a perfect category for something. Now, I don't really know how you can categorize this. Um, like, it's basically, what I mean by categorised is, like, things like based under siege stories. Um, basically, they land... Not really. No, it's not a perfect example. The Dominators. The Seeds of Death. This is the regular edition with the 40th anniversary logo. Um, that's the standard edition, and then I have the Seeds of Death Special Edition, which I got in special in uh, Revisitations 2. Now, why did I get uh, Seeds of Death Normal when I should have just got waited to get Revisitations 2? Mainly because Seeds of Death, this one, if you saw in my unboxing, I mainly wanted to get it because it has the region, the 40th anniversary. Now we begin Tom's era with. Robot, ah oh, yes, sorry for the terrible impression, but still, it is a brilliant beginning. 